how's it going everyone my name is spencer smith and thanks for tuning back into my channel today we are going to talk about a very important issue like always and that is the topic of theonomy christian reconstruction christian nationalism dominion theology what's the big deal what's with all the debate and what's with all of this talk of christian nationalism well, for starters, theonomy simply means theos namos, God's law, God's law, all of his word as law. That's essentially what theonomy means. And the basic thesis of theonomic ethics comes from Psalm 119, verse 160, where the psalmist says, the sum of thy word is truth, and every one of thy righteous ordinances or law is everlasting. Jesus said the law of God taught love for God and love for neighbor. That's exactly what we want in all areas of life. We want love for God and love for neighbor. And how could God's law be everlasting? It's because it reflects the unchanging character of God. Revelation 15, 4 says, for God alone is holy. Well, Paul says in Romans 7 that the law is holy, righteous, and good. Well, if God alone is holy, and the law of God is holy, righteous, and good, how could we not conclude that the law is holy because it reflects the unchanging character of God alone? So theonomists and Christian Reconstructionists teach that God's law word is holy, righteous and good and we want that law to be brought about and applied to all areas of life church family and state now that's where you get in trouble you see you tread fine when you start saying the law of god applies to the family the christian family and applies to the christian church but don't try to apply the law out there to the state no because you see the state is god the state has the power to determine good and evil apart from god this in the bible is depicted as a beast a beast that says not god's law no you don't want god's law bound on the forehead on the hand as deuteronomy 6 says no 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 we're gonna rule by my law you're gonna put my name on your forehead and you're going to put my name on your hand, not God's law on the forehead and on the hand, like it was in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 6. No, no, no. It's my law, the state's law. You see, that form of government is called a beast in Revelation 13. But what's so perplexing to me is you have many Christians today who would prefer the beast for a ruler that determines good and evil on his own autonomous whims. Paul says in Romans 13 that God gives the power of the sword to the civil magistrate. And the civil magistrate is to punish the evil and reward the good. Now I want to ask the question. This is what all theonomists ask, those who disagree with our thesis. By what standard? How should the state punish evil? And how should the state reward good? He must appeal to his standard to know the difference between good and evil, doesn't he? Do you really think that God gives the power of the sword to these civil leaders and says, hey, you know what, guys? Rule any way you want. You know, you don't have to appeal to me and my wisdom found in the law. I know, I know Hebrews 2.2 2 says every transgression of my law received a just penalty, just weights, balance, everything, justice, and the law of God taught love for God and love for neighbor. I know my law teaches love for God and love for neighbor, but you know, you don't have to rule in a way that I want you to rule. You could just go rule any way you want, any way you want. And you know what ends up happening? The state says, oh, We'll rule any way we want. We're God. Hey, there's babies in the womb. Hey, let's kill them. And you want to know what's frustrating? Is I find many Christians in the, in the Christian church and seminaries and professors and pastors literally will go on record to decry Christian nationalism. Oh, we don't want Christian nationalism. We don't want theonomy. We don't want Christian rule here. We don't want that because if that starts to happen, that means you're ushering in the kingdom. That means you're trying to bring about the kingdom and Jesus says his kingdom's not of this world. On and on and on and on and on it goes. And yet when I read the New Testament, I don't hear a whisper of that. No, what I read in Colossians 1 is that Jesus is the creator. He is the firstborn, the preeminent one. He is the one who inherits. He is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. All things were created through him and for him. Whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authority, all things were created through him and 
for him. But yeah, you know, you got the Christian church saying, well, you know what? That's later. That's when he comes back in the future and establishes a kingdom in, in the end days. All of that glory, all of that dominion, all of that stuff is postponed until later. And this is why you have in the Christian church today, many well-meaning brothers and sisters attacking us, the anonymous, Christian reconstructionists, or Christian nationalists, I'll embrace that title, that's fine. But that's why you see that, is because you'll see them saying, well, you're just trying to bring about the kingdom. No, we're not. The kingdom's already here. The kingdom's been here for 2,000 years. And it's your negligence that's causing all of this evil all around us. Yes, there will always be evil, but yet how should we scuttle that evil? How should we deter that evil and restrain that evil in the theonomist and the Christian reconstructionists all along have always said that the law of God restrains the evil intentions of men's heart, the ungodly. What does Paul say in 1 Timothy 1.8? We know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not laid down for the righteous man, but for the ungodly and sinner, for the unholy and profane, for homosexual perverts, for those who kill their father and mother. And he goes through the list of the Ten Commandments, and he says, All of this, whatever else is contrary to sound teaching, and he says, in accordance with my gospel, the law of God that restrains the evil intentions of men's heart is in accordance with Paul's gospel. But yet many Christian pastors and well-meaning leaders today, it's not in accordance with theirs. And it's so sad. It's so sad because, you know, we sit in our nice offices like this and I and I have all these books and I sit in my nice chair and I read and we talk about these things and we talk about theology, the glories of Christ and the glories of typology, how Jesus fulfills the Old Testament and how he glorious it is and how glorious salvation is. And we talk about it and we argue with each other and we have all of these conferences and we write all of these books and it's all so glorious. But yet, our nation is murdering babies. Our nation parades and and extols homosexual perverts all around us. All of this evil, all of this wickedness. And you got Christians literally attacking other Christians for trying to say, we need to do something about this. And they say, no, you can't do anything about this. This evil is a part of a sign of the end times. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You see how destructive that is? You see how destructive that is? So when Christians really want to do reconstruction, reform, and change, and bring about godly rule, God's law, God's law word to all areas of life, when Christians try to do that and apply God's word, which teaches love for God and love for neighbor, and when Christians try to actually apply that into the civil sphere, into the into the form of the state, when Christians try to do that, you get called a heretic. You get called a Christian nationalist. You get called... What of those dominionists, those people who want to bring about God's kingdom, those people who want to bring and force God's or Christ's kingdom on earth. And I'm saying, what are you even talking about, man? Christ's kingdom has been here for 2,000 years, and it's our job to rule and live in accordance with his word. We're created for this. We are created for God. In all areas of life, what's created for Christ. That's what Colossians 1 says. I'm just applying it and I'm asking, why aren't you, brother? Why aren't you, sister? Why aren't you applying it like we should be? Oh, well, it's because the end days. Well, that's why eschatology matters and that's why I made this YouTube channel and I have more videos on eschatology and that's why we need to sit down and we need to have a discussion about what the heck are we doing here? But when it's all said and done, after this rant, when it's all said and done, we really need to have a sober, you know, inhale and an exhale. We need to really think about this as Christians, ministers, pastors, leaders, content creators, people who write books and scholars, professors, all of us, all of us Christians really need to take a deep breath and look at all of this. I mean, the secular world, <laughs> I mean, abortion, the, the, the murder, the slaughter. I mean, they're literally burning the flesh off of babies in the womb. I mean, Ohio is not that far from me. 
I mean, my wife, we're going to have a baby, a baby girl in June right now, right now. And you know, and I don't think we think about this that much, but right now I can drive my wife over into Ohio, take me two, two and a half hours. And I can murder my baby girl right now and do it freely. Yeah, it'd be complex, but I can do it. I could do it somewhere in this nation. And that's not love for God. And that's not love for neighbor. And we would all agree with that. All of us Christians, we would agree with it. We would all say, of course it's not. That's evil. That's unjust. And I'm saying, yes, it is, brother. Yes, it is. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? And Jesus says, the law of God taught love for God and love for neighbor. Paul says in Romans 13 that the civil magistrate must punish the evil and reward the good. And I'm saying that, that evil and that good is defined by God's law word. All of his word as law. And it must be applied. It's applied in the family. It's applied in the church. And it must be applied in the state unless you want a beast of a ruler and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and we just cannot anymore wrench our hands and say, well, it's a sign of the last days. We can't do that. We can't do that. We need to engage. We need to take action. We need to apply God's word, his standards. He, he says in Amos, I've told you what is good, O oh man. O oh Adam, God says, I've told you. He's told us. He says, I've told you what is good, O Adam. At least us Christian reconstructionists, us theonomists, whatever, Christian nationalists, those who believe God's law, his word is to be applied, and his kingdom is now, and his rule is over all areas of life. Those of us who believe that, we're willing to talk about how we apply those word. How how do we apply the law? We're willing to talk about it. Hey, and if you have insight, I'm open for it. I'm open for it. But let's just remember, every single day that passes by, every single time that we talk about this, that we're inactive, and the state is God, walking on earth, doing whatever it wishes, punishing the good and rewarding the evil, ruling autonomously, a beast of a ruler, every single time we talk about that, all of that's happening. And that ungodly state, is punishing little babies in the womb, punishing Christians for preaching in front of abortion clinics, punishing Christians for preaching at gay pride f- parades, for not using the right pronouns, punishing people for not meeting up to their, their, their law, their law. There's blasphemy laws today. I mean, there are. And if you blaspheme the state God, the God state, the secular state, oh, you'll pay. You'll pay greatly. But let's just remember that. Jesus says, the law of God taught love for God and love for neighbor. That's what we want. That's what I want. And that's what we should want. And it's not about any of this. Oh, you're trying to usher in the kingdom. No, a fooey with all of that. Let's, let's, let's stop talking about that. Yeah, we could talk about eschatology. I could tell you all day long on how the, the, the kingdom of God, Jesus says, if I cast out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. And that was 2,000 years ago. We can could, we could have that discussion. But let's just remember, babies are being murdered. People are being persecuted for their faith in America and, and all over, really. But people are suffering under a God state who thinks it's autonomous who thinks it can rule in any way it wants. And we're going to pay. Our children are going to pay. My children will pay. And I'm willing to do something about it. And we're trying to talk about it. And yet we get a bunch of flack from the other side, the pre-mill guys and the all-mill guys. We get a lot of flack from them. Oh, you guys are just trying to usher in the kingdom. Oh, dominion theology. Well, you know what? You know what? You know what's about what's funny about dominion? Dominion is inescapable. Dominion is in eight. We are created for dominion. And everything you see in this world is someone's dominion being displayed. Someone's dominion is being displayed all around you. And today, the secular God state is dominating. It's forcing its ungodly domination, really, upon us. 
And the Christians accept it. Submit, submit, submit. But you want to know what? Righteous dominion, godly dominion, Christian dominion is peace, joy, love, gentleness, and the Holy Spirit, self-control. That's what godly Christian dominion is. And that bleeds out into all areas of life. That's what Christian dominion is. We want that. We need that. We need that. So yeah, you can deride us. You can call me a dominionist or Christian nationalist. Fine, I'll embrace that. That's fine. That's fine. In fact, I'll embrace it because that's what Christ has described in uh, Colossians 1. He has dominion over all things, preeminent over all things. And if you are in Christ, you're reigning with him. So, hey, I'll embrace it. Nonetheless, this was a rant video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And may the Lord be with all of you. And God bless. Like and subscribe.